How did it all start? There is a great question. It was in the face of the collapse of the banking system in 2008 that the blockchain originated. The all-powerful, unshakable banking system was now brought to its knees. A seemingly unshakable system, on its knees, begging for a way out. Through the Emergency Economic Stabilization Act of 2008, bail was granted by the U.S. government. 700 billion U.S. dollars were spent on purchasing distressed assets and providing liquid cash reserves to rescue the ailing U.S. banking system. Well, it might have been bailed out by the government, but not by us. From us, from the ones like you and me, who see the truth from the lies, the banking system received a vote of no confidence. Now we don't have time for lengthy explanations. Suffice to say this, the trust of the people in the bank was shaken and destroyed. If such a huge icon of stability and trust could be uprooted, then what could, in fact, be trusted? In a quiet and secret place, while all this trouble was going down, Satoshi Nakamoto's brain solved the puzzle of trust in the banking system when he originated the very first blockchain. Yes, blockchain. Satoshi, who is really an anonymous person or group of people, devised a technology that took the power out of the hands of the banks, effectively decentralizing the flow of money from person to person, from company to company, and even from country to country. He called it Bitcoin. Bitcoin was started in 2009 and is the world's first cryptocurrency, a digital currency that enables instant, secure, and efficient monetary exchange between peers, regardless of their geographic location, or the bank that they use, or the native currency that they use on a daily basis. Bitcoin was built on blockchain, and blockchain technology was built as the platform for Bitcoin. Why? Because blockchain technology is 100% transparent. It is also governed by a set of principles, not people. That means that people who trade Bitcoin do not actually need to trust each other. They trust the blockchain. Why? Because it is monitored by a diverse number of unrelated users on a continuous basis. Satoshi's blockchain has now become everyone's blockchain, and that is the beauty of it. It is open source, which means it is transparent, fully authenticated, and altogether auditable by anyone who uses it. Miners, who are all given administrator status on the blockchain network, act as nodes on the network who receive raw data generated when a transaction takes place on the Bitcoin blockchain. This data is referred to as a hash and it reflects on the Bitcoin ledger and miners compete with each other to verify the transaction by applying various algorithms. The first miner to validate and verify a transaction is paid in Bitcoin. One thing to bear in mind is that one Bitcoin is currently worth around five and a half thousand US dollars. Traditional currencies work in holes, dollars, and fractions, cents. Cryptocurrencies work in decimals. So, a pair of sneakers might cost 0.1 BTCS, Bitcoins, or an automobile might cost four BTCS. Whether 0.1 or 0.7, Bitcoin has value. Holding 0.8 Bitcoin means you own an equivalent of around four and a half thousand dollars. You might find it interesting to note that Bitcoin is now the currency of choice for millions of people around the world. Tried, proven, and here to stay. Because of blockchain technology, Bitcoin works. Because Bitcoin, now a tradable digital currency, has grown at a rapid pace, blockchain technology is here to stay. No more bank transfers. No more SWIFT codes for international payments. No more endlessly waiting for payments to clear. No need to buy Forex to make global payments. Welcome to the age of blockchain technology. It's only the very Why is blockchain beginning? technology important. Some might say that this is the most important question in our Internet 2.0 world. Most would say that blockchain technology is the dawn of Internet 3.0. A reality where everything can be verified through the application of the blockchain technology. The mammoth success of Bitcoin and the rise of an entire cryptocurrency exchange has opened the world's eyes to the power of the blockchain. But first, let's back up a bit, shall we? So, blockchain technology was born out of a catastrophic breakdown of trust in the US banking system, right? Right. And trust me, there was no small deal. Trust was broken. 
Satoshi, the father of the blockchain, essentially developed a digital platform that enabled open source verification of data. A platform that removed trust from the equation altogether and ushered in transparency. So, can you think of any other area in our contemporary world where trust is the issue? Think about it. When you buy your favorite brand of watch, sneakers, phone, etc., are you not trusting that it is the genuine thing? How about medicine? Are you taking the real thing? Has someone hijacked you with dangerous generic meds? When you vote, how can you be sure that your vote is counted? How can election administrators verify that it was you who voted? Imagine a world where you don't need paper invoices, hard copy contract documents, proof of payment, proof of patent, ballot cards, or other trust protecting documents that are so much a part of our lives. You see where I'm going with this, don't you? Enter the blockchain. We are on the cusp of a world-changing revolution, the revolution of blockchain technology. You see, when Bitcoin succeeded, and one might say it has succeeded when it has a market cap of over 90 billion US dollars, the question had to be asked, how and why did it succeed? Bitcoin succeeded because it was built on a platform that enabled transparency and verification not just by the ones who held the power, government, corporates, and banks, but by anyone who cared to look and to verify. This means that leaders in other industries facing trust issues, or hang on, wait, yes, that would be most industries, began to ask the question, hey, what if we could use the same principles to protect our industry from a breakdown in trust? This led to the separation of blockchain technology from Bitcoin as a standalone innovation that has innumerable applications in as many industries. Today, major financial institutions are moving in the direction of deploying blockchain technology into their operations. Many trend experts are dubbing the blockchain as being as big of a deal as the original invention of the internet. As traditional mindsets change and as the pace of change exceeds people's capacity to hold on to the limitations of what they know, Blockchain technology will redefine supply chain management, patent laws and practices, social media content, internet dating. Yes, what you see in the picture will be what you get in real life. Manufacturing, financial advisory services, and yes, just about everything else in all the world as we know it. And what does it all come down to? Eliminating the need for trust to be protected. Rather remove trust from the equation and work on a transparent system that introduces us to a world where what you see is what you get. Because that, folks, is where it all went wrong in the first place. Enter the blockchain revolution. Enter Internet 3.0. Enter a new realm of efficiency. The best is yet to blockchain. Now, that is the question that people keep asking. How will the blockchain actually change my life? In a practical way? What will change? And you see, the answer to that question is exciting to all of us. The blockchain is all about decentralizing power so that things can be fair, quick, smooth, and efficient. And Bitcoin has proved that it works. Think of the things in your life where the middleman gets in the way. Yes, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies have proved that banks get in the way and that the blockchain works to get them out of the way. But what else? Well, if hundreds or even tens of thousands of blockchain members can see if I am doing what I said I would do, then why should I not enter into contracts via the blockchain? What if I could take out insurance, take a mobile phone contract, or subscribe to my internet service provider without the need for any signature or hard copies of any kind to prove that I had signed these contracts? If I require medication, my doctor can send in a script to be filled at my pharmacist via the blockchain. I can receive payment for extra work that I had done, pay my mortgage, settle my debts, all via the blockchain. The ease of use and the security of these transactions would be unprecedented. Because you see, although my transactions are totally secure, they are also largely anonymous. My relatives or colleagues or worse, my boss, would not be able to track my private spending or how much I earn on the side. The beauty of it lies in being both secure and anonymous. It's a win-win scenario. For the first time, I am able to contract with anyone via the blockchain. More than that, I do so in such a way that there is no room for dispute, because all contractual activities are recorded on the blockchain ledger. 
Also, companies that had to keep archives in secure locations for a fee will no longer have to do so, because every activity on the blockchain is there for life. No more document storage required. It's all there, in code, on the blockchain. Forever. Of course, there is no perfect world, and blockchains still present an odd failure or problem. But they undoubtedly offer quicker, cheaper, and more secure platforms upon which to manage anything from the most complex corporate contract to the most basic household service. In blockchain terms, we call new generation contracts smart contracts. The revolutionists like us, that's you and me, are saying that smart contracts, contracting with other parties using blockchain, will end the legal profession as we know it. Why? Because on blockchain a contract would be verified. It would be transparent. And the conditions placed on both or all parties would be publicly witnessed and agreed. In blockchain format, smart contracts would be converted to computer code. They would be stored, replicated on the blockchain ledger and effectively supervised by the network of computers that run the blockchain. We call them miners. Miners are the open source verifiers of transactions or contracts between unrelated parties on the blockchain network. All money, property, shares or any other form of value that changed hands, whether tangible or intangible, would be captured on the smart contract. These would be accessed directly, paid directly, and any disputes between parties would be quickly straightened out by reviewing the blockchain ledger to establish the facts. No lawyers, no middlemen. Payments would be made in Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency, and the entire process would have been conducted without a single signature. Suppose you wanted to rent a holiday home from me. We enter into a rental agreement but agree to process our business together in cryptocurrency. Payment received by me triggers a digital rental key, which is recorded in our virtual contract. The blockchain version of this would mean that, if the digital key hasn't arrived with you by a specific date, the deal is cancelled and the refund is paid to you by the blockchain. Should I send the digital key to you before payment and before the rental date, the blockchain holds both the key and the payment when it is received until the rental date when both are released simultaneously. The smart contract operates on the principle that says that, if I am being supervised by the members of the blockchain, I will satisfy the contractual requirements and faultless delivery takes place. Once a contract of this nature is verified on the blockchain ledger, there is no amendment and no change unless both parties agree, which would also be a verifiable action on the blockchain. So goodbye middleman, goodbye gatekeepers of financial freedom, and goodbye lawyers. The future is here. Do you trust your bank? Do you believe that they are really looking after you? Do you feel confident that your bank, along with all your money, will still be here tomorrow? Did you know that the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation only insures deposits of 250,000 US dollars? If a bank holds more than that amount and loses it, you will only receive the maximum allowable insurance. How about this one, just to open your eyes? How do you know that your private banking information is actually, well, private? Is your information being used or shared without your permission? So, again, do you really trust your bank? Well, millions did, until 2008 happened, and the entire banking system in America was brought to all but absolute ruin by the subprime mortgage crisis. Here, banks overborrowed to home buyers, causing a spike in home prices. Their flawed financial modeling, as well as a good dose of greed and fraud, eventually saw mortgaged homeowners defaulting on payments they could never actually afford in the first place. Defaults caused banks to lose money. Homeowners lost their houses, banks lost their cash flow, and the economy came to a grinding halt. People lost a lot more than their money. They lost their careers, their dignity, and their sanity. Why? because the bank that had been there until yesterday, well, wasn't there today. While the trouble was going down, along with many corrupt bankers and innocent citizens just looking to make it safely through to tomorrow, Satoshi Nakamoto applied his genius to the situation. Satoshi, well that's what we like to call him, or them anyway, issued the ultimate vote of no confidence in 2009 when he started Bitcoin. Yes, Bitcoin the anti-bank revolution that, many would say, will see the demise of the banking system right across the planet. Bitcoin is a digital currency, or more properly known as a cryptocurrency. 
Cryptocurrencies are not controlled by any one entity, person, or institution, and eliminate the need for centralized banking systems and trust from financial transactions. So, in essence, Bitcoin was created to enable people and organizations to engage in instant, secure, and verified financial transactions with whomever they please, without needing to rely on the banking system. This was achieved using the increasingly famous and valuable blockchain technology, which ensures that financial transactions are supervised, verified, and audited by users of the network. These users are also known as miners. Effectively, it snatched the power from the bank's hands and placed it in the hands of the people wanting to enter into transactions with efficiency and security. Bitcoin is built on a technology known as blockchain, and it's not just Satoshi's anymore either. Blockchain is open source, which is where its power lies. In summary, blockchain is made up of a network of users who trade with one another using Bitcoin. Every transaction is verified by miners who act as workers on the network. They compete with each other to verify each new transaction that takes place on the Bitcoin network. When a transaction is verified, the miner who verified it is paid in Bitcoin. Once a transaction between peers on the network is verified, it cannot be changed or tampered with in any way, and that transaction is recorded on the blockchain ledger forever. One might imagine that a currency of this nature, that is a cryptocurrency, might become a tradable asset that could actually create wealth for its holders. Stop to consider, then, that in 2009 Bitcoin was worth zero dollars. In May 2010, two pizzas were bought for 10,000 Bitcoins. Today, in 2017, you would need 5,000 US dollars to purchase one whole coin. To put it mildly, you will want to take your transaction into the cryptocurrency world, not just for the sake of instant transactions without the burden of the banking system, but for freedom to pay or receive money from anyone in the world within seconds in an efficient and secure way. And then there's the fact that there are those amongst us that have grown their wealth by purchasing, holding, and trading in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Have you got coin? It's time for Bitcoin. Don't miss out on the revolution because it's Bitcoin here to stay. Have any use outside of it being a digital cryptocurrency? Does it have the power to reshape the world economy? Will it make a difference to everyone or just to the techno revolutionists that thrive on new ideas? Do you want to keep trusting your bank or do you want to spread your financial wings and soar? Bitcoin gets all the obstacles to freedom out of the way while keeping it secure and efficient. It's the best of both worlds, and because of this, it presents a whole universe full of usefulness to us all in the new world. Sure, Bitcoin was just the first mover. There are hundreds of cryptocurrencies that are alive and kicking as they follow Bitcoin, the mothership of all things crypto. The fact is, Bitcoin can be used for any financial transaction, as long as both parties have a Bitcoin address. It's that simple. What can't Bitcoin do? Well, nothing. As ordinary people catch on to the no-brainer decision to stick with their banks or to take it online to the blockchain, we'll only see Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies strengthen and improve all the more. Supermarkets. Yes, ordinary ones where people still pay in old money are already starting to awaken the power of Bitcoin in their businesses. If Bitcoin works for fast-moving consumer goods, and it will work, there is no business where it wouldn't work. If a high-volume trader trusts the blockchain and is confident that every transaction is verified, then why should anyone doubt it? It's all a question of people's readiness to embrace change. To part with the old centralized banking system and join the new cryptocurrency revolution. So when it comes to motor and household insurance, Bitcoin. Satellites, internet service provider premiums, cable, online shopping and big box buys like smart TVs, building renovations or buying an automobile, Bitcoin. So, how do we get there? It may seem like a lofty vision to some, but when we think that Bitcoin, which is not even a decade old, now holds a market share of 94 billion US dollars, it is altogether believable. Smart contracts, or contracts that are entered into via the blockchain, make every other contract a very average expression of old gen. Buy with Bitcoin, sell with Bitcoin, and have the whole contract on the blockchain ledger. No paper, no signatures, no disputes. Make an international payment in seconds, without international payment delays and endless agony waiting for money to clear. And the beauty of Bitcoin is that it will not disclose who made the payment or who received it. 
It is altogether traceable, but your confidentiality remains intact. No lawyer required to draw up a watertight contract. No middleman, and again, no bank to slow you down. No risking broken trust in a system where power is centralized to a bank. So, to answer the question, how can we use Bitcoin? The answer is, think it. Do it with Bitcoin, bit by bit. The world is awakening to the new reality. Ride the wave of the blockchain. Surf the wave of Bitcoin.